Welcome to Creekside Chats with successful multifamily real estate investors. Dr. Allen chats with successful investors exploring their journey from setback to triumph. Through this window, we glimpse the truths that inspire our guests to invest abundantly and flourish in all areas of life. And now your host, Dr. Allen. Welcome to Creekside Chats with successful multifamily real estate investors. I'm your host, Dr. Allen. Today's guest is a best-selling author and one of Robert Kiyosaki's Rich Dad Advisors. He has over 35 years experience assisting businesses to limit their liability, protect their assets, implement advantageous corporate structures, and advance their financial goals. Robert Kiyosaki calls him the premier source for asset protection strategies. Welcome to the show, Garrett Sutton. Looking forward to getting to know uh, the real person here behind uh, the phenomenal success. Um, tell us, uh, Garrett, where did it all begin? If you can think back to a time in your childhood, uh, particularly a formative experience as you look back on it, uh, you think of it as a formative experience, you probably didn't at the time, but as you look back on it, you can say, yeah, that has something to do with who I am today. Well, I, I grew up in the San Francisco Bay Area and, uh, you know, great family, uh, no complaints about the parenting involved. And uh, so in terms of a, a formative experience, um, you know, I always enjoyed writing, even in elementary school and in high school. And I never really thought that I could be a writer. Um, it's just not a career path that you considered, at least in our schooling and our, our location, but I always enjoyed it. And then when I was uh, able to go to law school, I was able to do some writing there. And then I became very uh, fortunate to become associated with Robert Kiyosaki. And they asked me to write uh, these books for the series. And uh, so that was just a, just a stroke of great luck for me because, you know, I enjoy writing. I, I enjoy trying to communicate legal principles to people in a, in a clear manner, you know, too much of, of legal writing is hide the ball, right? You, you, they don't want That's you. That's the to point, understand. isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm trying to present it to people in a way that is um, not in legalese, uh, something that people can find accessible. And uh, it, it's been really enjoyable, Alan, to just, you know, I talk to people all the time for consults and mm -hmm. so many of them are appreciative that I've written these books uh, and, and try to demystify these legal topics. Well, you mentioned uh, Robert uh, Kawasaki and you said it was just uh, by happenstance that you came to be connected. How, how did that come about? Well, uh, I uh, shared office space with an attorney here in Reno. I'm in Reno, Nevada. And uh, the CPA that I shared the space with moved to Phoenix and uh, met Robert. And uh, then they needed a Nevada attorney. Nevada is a great state for corporations and LLCs. Right. And uh, they interviewed a few. And Alan, what I think really turned the tide for me in my favor was that I played rugby back in the day. Um, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Robert is a huge rugby fan. We've uh -huh. been two World Cups uh, together. I, I played rugby at Colorado College and then mm -hmm. at Hastings Law School. And so we're just, you know, there's a camaraderie with, with rugby. And uh, so that's what really uh, helped, helped me uh, Helps become an time. advisor. Well, interesting happen uh, stance there. So tell us about the camaraderie in uh, rugby. It's not really an American sport by and large, and most of us don't know much about it. So tell us about that camaraderie. Well, it's, it's really a team sport. In football and baseball, you have assigned roles. But in rugby, you're, you're playing offense and defense the mm. whole time. You have to fill in here and there. It's not like my job is center in football and I'm only going to do one thing. Uh, in rugby, you have to do, be able to do everything. You have to mm. be able to tackle, run, kick, everything. Everybody does everything. And so that lends itself towards more of a, of, of a flat um, uh, type of team whereby there's no one quarterback, there's no one star pitcher. Everybody contributes. And that lends itself to a camaraderie. And, uh, you know, part of the rugby experience is 
uh, going out there and, and playing as hard as you can. Uh, but then afterwards, after the game, the two sides get together and sing songs and just enjoy the rest of the day. So, hmm. um, you know, I played rugby uh, in San Francisco in the 1970s, and uh, our team still gets together twice a year. Oh, you know? wow. Wow, and, that is something. Yeah, and uh, so, you know, the stories get bigger. Um, <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, but you know, it's just, it, it, it's just been a great group of guys that uh, we still keep in touch with. Huh. Well, it's, it's an extreme contact, isn't it? I mean, it's a, uh, it's a yeah. rough game, right? It's like football without pads. Um, yeah. That's... Now there's no lead blocking. So you don't have someone coming around the corner to try and take you out or, mm. you know, blow your knee out. So you're, you're off sides if you're ahead of the ball. And so that limits some of the injuries, but it, you know, it, you play on a Saturday, you're feeling it on a Sunday. <laughs> yeah, I'll bet. Um, well, interesting. So did, does Robert play himself or he's just a, a fan? No, he played for the Hawaii Harlequins, which oh, yeah. uh, were a really good team back in the seventies. They oh. still play. They, uh, Robert and I went to a tournament about three years ago that the, Hawaii Harlequins had in uh, in uh, Honolulu, and they invite mm -hmm. teams from around the Pacific Rim, uh, you know, Japan, New Zealand, Australia, uh, to their tournaments. So, uh, but Robert was a very good player back in the day, and uh, there's a chance we may have played against each other at the Monterey Rugby Tournament, but mm -hmm. uh, you know, the the haze of time. I'm not sure that was <laughs> accurate or not. <laughs> A nice story anyway, huh? Right. <laughs> so, uh, well, uh, you talked to us a little bit about uh, the pleasure and joy you get in uh, bringing uh, legalities to the common person and helping us understand that. So I'm assuming that that is one of the driving forces in, in your life. So talk to us a little bit more about that and... Uh, the satisfaction and fulfillment that comes from that process? Well, you know, when I first started practicing law, Alan, I mean, I, I just saw that the legal system was too confusing for people. It, it intimidates people. Um, and it, it, we're all, we're not best served by having people be ignorant of the law. I mean, I, mm -hmm. I, I really think that they should teach law in high school, mm -hmm. you know, to, to keep kids, through their senior year of high school, they should have law classes your senior year. I think kids would stick around to learn about the law. And so I just wish that there was more exposure to the law. And because there isn't, because they don't teach these important things in school, um, I feel it's important that if I can help out uh, by writing these books in the Rich Dad series uh, to demystify the law, to make it accessible for people, um, that's, that's what I enjoy doing. And, and as I mentioned earlier, Alan, people, I, I get on the phone for half an hour. We talk about how to set up corporations and LLCs and people have read my book and they're, they're very appreciative, uh, for the, the content I put out there so that mm -hmm. I'm not trying to, uh, make, I, I'm not trying to talk down to people because you can explain the law in a very simple matter of fact way. And that's what I've, I've tried to do, is just make it accessible for everybody. Have you had the opportunity to actually work with high school uh, students in conjunction with, uh, with understanding the law? You know, I, I haven't. The, the Rich Dad organization, you know, Robert wrote Rich Dad, Poor Dad, which mm -hmm. is the most popular financial, personal finance book of all time. And I've been with the group for 20 years. And maybe 15 years ago, Alan, they tried to get the rich dad message into the public high schools mm -hmm. and they just met with a lot of resistance. And mm -hmm. I don't know that it was that the, the, they didn't want to teach this information. I just think part of it is the, the school system has so much that they have to put out there. They, you know, right. you have to learn biology, you have to learn geometry. Mm -hmm. uh, there was no room for economics and entrepreneurship. I think that's starting to change with some mm -hmm. high schools, but we really uh, pushed forward on it and, and met with quite a bit of resistance. Um, the Rich Dad Company is always open to helping 
high school teachers uh, with the information. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Robert created a board game. And the, the best way to learn about things is to play the game. Right. Yeah. And, and so, uh, you know, the games are available for uh, teachers to teach in school. Um, but have I personally worked with high schools on the legal thing? I, I've gone into a few high schools to talk about it, but really it hasn't, uh, it hasn't been as, um, let's say, robust an endeavor as I would have hoped. Well, you know, there's, there's just not uh, too many teachers out there who themselves know much about uh, finance and the law. And so I can see why it would be uh, intimidating. I'm, it's not just teachers, but administrators. That's just not, you know, they don't come from wealthy right. backgrounds. They don't. They don't have financial education themselves. Um, and so I can see why it would be a challenge to, uh, to get those things into the school system. Uh, but uh, can you give us an example of if you had the opportunity to put it into the high school system, uh, just give us a ex specific example, take a case or take uh, a legal precedent or something and, and Tell us, how would you explain that to a high school student? Well, it's interesting, Alan. I, I created a game for these Rich Dad seminars that mm. uh, we go to. And mm -hmm. uh, my game is called Piercing the Corporate Veil. Mm. And when you have a corporation or an LLC, you set it up for legal you know, uh, liability um, purposes. You don't want unlimited personal liability. If you run a tire store, you don't want someone suing for something that happened at the tire store and reach all of your personal assets. So you'll set up mm -hmm. a corporation or an LLC for that protection, but you have to maintain the LLC on an ongoing basis or else you lose the protection. Mm -hmm. And that's called piercing the corporate veil where they go through the corporation to the individual. Mm -hmm. And so we created a game called piercing the corporate veil where we have a couple different cases and the, uh, the parties in, in the school or at the seminar will divide up into various groups and you'll have two attorneys and two witnesses and two judges. Mm -hmm. And of course, people love playing attorney. It's just, uh, <laughs> you know, they, they, it's really great how the personalities come forward when you get to be the attorney. Uh, <laughs> and so this game has been just a lot of fun for people. And so if I were to go into the schools and, and teach about corporations and LLCs, uh, we've played this game on uh, all the continents except Antarctica. I've, I've played, no, we haven't played it in Africa, but every other continent, because Rich Dad's very popular around the world. Mm -hmm. And we've traveled around the world teaching uh, financial education. And so we've played this game on all these continents. And it, it's great because it's kind of universal, Alan. People, uh, you know, want this information. It's true in every society that you do have corporations for limited liability, and you do have this continuing obligation to maintain the corporation. If you don't, you can pierce the veil. So it applies in all countries. And, uh, God, it was so much fun in Chile. These the Chileans just got into the game. It was <laughs> it, it was very uh, humorous the way they uh, attacked the uh, the other side as lawyers. But it, it was you know it's universally popular. It's something that could be taught in schools very easily. And again, you learn through games, right? Yeah. Too many <laughs> times you have to listen to a professor up there, and you only take in ten percent of the information. Mm -hmm. when you're being lectured to, when you play a game, you get 70 to 80 percent uh, of the information you need. So, you right. know, yeah. and it's really interesting because in Rome, in ancient Rome, they called schools ludus. And mm -hmm. that's another word for game. I mean, they what taught the kids through games. Huh. Uh, that was how you matriculated in, in the Roman Empire was in school. You played games. Yeah. Yeah, we need we need more games in life. That is for sure. Uh, just uh, actually, just before uh, uh, talking with you, I was uh, interviewing a um, uh, a periodontist, and one of the things he mentioned is that 
the aspect of the possibility of lawsuit is constantly upon uh, their minds. Um, have you worked with uh, with the medical profession in? Um, well, my wife's a doctor, so yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah. So uh, is it is protecting them different from corporations? You suggest all uh, physicians have a corporation. Does a cooperate? Does a co corporation protect them? Uh, from uh, not from, from malpractice. Uh, malpractice is a personal claim. A so thing. you can operate through a corporation or an LLC, mm -hmm. but in a malpractice claim, that's that's a personal action. You can't hide so. behind the corporation. However, you know you're going to work with a group or through a hospital, and you'll have mm -hmm. malpractice insurance there. Then the second effort is to make sure your other assets. Uh, your personal assets are in LLCs. Mm -hmm. So let's say you have a brokerage account as a doctor, you know, you, a Charles Schwab account. That should be in the name of an LLC. Let's say you have a rental property. You own a fourplex on the other side of town and that's providing income to you. You should have that title to that fourplex held in the name of an LLC. And so that's what I consult with uh, clients, um, you know, uh, about is how to structure your affairs so that we can take advantage of the laws which exist in all 50 states. We can take advantage of these laws to protect ourselves and limit our, our, limit our liability. Now, insurance is always the first line of defense. I would mm -hmm. never tell anyone not to have insurance. But the second line of defense are these uh, LLCs and corporations which can protect you in the event of a horrific claim. Yeah. So, but even in, even with the LLC and uh, corporations, with a, a a personal suit like your wife, um, they could possibly pierce the LLC and the corporation. Correct. They uh, could, not, but if I'm not. making sure that we <laughs> our <laughs> LLCs are well. Well protected. Are well protected uh, but, yeah. So you want to have that insurance for your business. Mm -hmm. Then you also want to have what's called a personal umbrella policy so that typically when your car and your home are with the same insurance company, say State Farm, mm -hmm. you can get an extra million dollars of coverage for say 400 a year. It's, it's not mm -hmm. very expensive. So the attorneys know how to get at insurance money, right? If you have enough of an umbrella policy and you get in that horrific car wreck, hopefully that's enough mm. for, to, to satisfy the claim. Now, if you have your assets in your individual name at that point, the attorney may want to uh, pursue those assets. If instead you have your personal assets in a Wyoming LLC, for example, mm -hmm. which offers great asset protection, it's not a good bet for the attorney to, to go after that asset because it's hard to get at. Mm -hmm. And, you know, these attorneys are on a contingency fee. They get a percentage of what is collected. And the insurance money, yes, they know how to get. I always recommend having insurance. But getting through these entities to assets is, is a hard thing. And they're, mm -hmm. they're better off going on to the next case that has insurance than trying to fight through these Wyoming LLCs. So that's how we like to structure things, Alan, is a combination of insurance and entities uh, for the best protection. Well, excellent. Um, well, we didn't get to talk a whole lot about your life here, but we've talked about some interesting things here. And uh, unfortunately, we're coming uh, to the end of our time here. Uh, before we close things out here, tell the folks uh, a little bit about uh, your books, how to get hold of them, and how to get hold of you. Well, uh, our website is corporatedirect.com, and we also offer a free 15-minute consultation with a, an incorporating paralegal, so you can call 800-600-1760 and get on the phone and see if we can help you uh, with the asset protection. My books, I'm happy to hold up. This one's called Loopholes of Real Estate. Uh, and 
We also have them all in audio books. This is Start mm -hmm. Your Own Corporation. A lot of people, as you know, Alan, are, are getting information through audiobooks now when they're True. driving around town or wherever. And uh, so we all our books mm -hmm. in the Rich Dad series are on audio. Okay, great, great. So yeah, corporatedirect.com or 800-600-1760. We'd be happy to assist you and, and, you know, just get on the phone and see if, see if it, it makes sense for yeah. us to assist you with that. Well, excellent. Um, it has been a pleasure having you, Garrett. I look forward to future conversations and uh, where we can get to know you a little bit better. So thanks for being on the show, Garrett. Thank you, Alan. I really appreciate it. Thank you for tuning in to Creekside Chats with successful multifamily real estate investors brought to you by Steed Talker Capital. Steed Talker Capital works with both new and established investors nationwide, creating opportunities to flourish in all areas of life. As part of our efforts to make the world a better place, Steed Talker Capital contributes to activities and organizations committed to better understand the equine. These endeavors attempt to enhance the human treatment of horses worldwide. Steed Talker Capital, working for a world where all creatures great and small flourish abundantly. For resources to enhance your well-being through multifamily real estate investment, connect with us online at capital.steedtalker.com.